Welcome to Dark Vows, the trial of Thomas Randolph. Dive into the live courtroom drama as we bring you unfiltered audio from one of the most riveting trials of the year. Accused of multiple marital murders, Randolph's fate unfolds before us. Join us as we navigate the testimonies, the tension, and the truth behind the headlines. This is Dark Vows. We are back on the record at C250966, Thomas Randolph. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Welcome back. Mr. Randolph is present as attorney's deputy district attorney on behalf of the state. Can both parties stick to the presence of our jury? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. State, are you prepared to call your next witness? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the state calls Antoinette Dean. Okay. Antoinette Beam, A N T O I N E T T E B E A M. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. Um, do your friends call you Tony? Yes. Okay. Did you have a friend by the name of Sharon Randolph? Yes. Um, do you remember approximately what year you met Sharon? Around 2004. Okay. And what were the circumstances? Did you work together or how did you meet? Through a friend of mine. Okay. Um, when you met her in um, 2004, um, was she uh, living at her house on Rancho Santa Fe Drive? Yes. Um, when you first met Sharon, did you guys go out and do things together, or did you talk to each other on the phone? What was the... What did oh, you do? Most? Well, um... At first, when I met her, she was actually actually dating a, a male friend of mine. So uh, we didn't go out until after they stopped seeing each other. Okay. And then you two became friends? Yes. <laughs> um, and what kinds of things would you do with her? Um, go, uh, you know, watch live bands, um, go to the casino, um, and just, you know, talk on the phone a lot. Did Sharon like movies? Yes, yes. I didn't go to movies with her. I'm not a big movie person, so. <laughs> but yes, she did. Okay. Um, in a, in the time period of 2008, um, did you see each other day to day during that time period? Uh, we saw each other off and on. Um, you know, I worked. Uh, she was working too, so we didn't see too much, but we did a lot of phone talking most of the time. When you say you talked on the phone, um, are you talking about daily, multiple times a day, weekly? Oh, yes. Daily, m more than once a day. Okay. We would talk sometimes, yeah. Okay. Um, at some point, did um, Sharon introduce you to a man she was involved with by the name of Thomas Randolph? Yes. And do you see him in the courtroom today? Mm, yes, I do. Could you point to him and describe what he's wearing today, please? Right there with the blue shirt. Your Honor, may the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant? Your Honor, um, Where were you when you met Mr. Randolph? Uh, we, uh, Sharon and uh, Mr. Randolph and I, we went to uh, the Sand Dollar Lounge. Okay, so just sort of a, a night out? Yes. Okay. Um, did you um, did you ever see him or go over to their house for dinner once he was living at the Rancho Santa Fe house? Yes. And um, obviously they were living together at that point. Mm -hmm. Yes. What was what kinds of things would you do at their house? Just have dinner or what? Anything else? Uh, yeah, dinner. You know, hang out, watch TV. 
In your um, contact with Mr. Randolph, um, did you observe him to have any um, medical conditions or physical problems? Yes. He, he couldn't, his, his back was always bothering him. Did he ever comment to you about any medication he was on? Uh, yes. What did he say about that? Well, he had a lot of medication that he was on for his pain. Okay. And um, did he ever tell you he was a walking pharmacy? Yes, 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 he did. That was when I first met him. Okay. Um, do you know how it was that Sharon met Mr. Randolph? online on a dating line online dating thing and in your conversations with Sharon was it your impression that um, the relationship sort of progressed slowly or or at a different no speed? yeah it, it went pretty fast yeah do you remember um, her ever discussing earns or life insurance yes that uh, I called her one day and they were out and they were uh, shopping for urns <laughs> and this was um, it was right around because you know they they got married twice so I don't remember if it was the first time or the second time but I just remember uh, Sharon telling me you know well you know you you have to plan for these things um, you, you know and we're getting old and and I said well Sharon uh, two people in love aren't planning their death <laughs> you know so I didn't understand why they were out shopping for urns I never heard of anything like that before okay do you know of other activities that they did like um, going boating or anything like that uh, Sharon liked to go bowling a, a lot uh, and I know she took her grandson. Uh, I'm not sure. He, Tommy might have gone too. I don't know if he was actually bowling. Okay. It, I don't really remember. But yeah, she did like to go bowling. Are you aware of whether or not Mr. Randolph had a boat? Yes. Do you remember them doing that, going boating? Yes, they went out, they went boating. And oh. they had some sort of a, where he was going too fast and knocked her into the boat. Yeah. Some sort of accident? Yeah. Um, do you remember them um, going on a cruise? Oh, yeah. They they went on a couple of cruises. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about, like, um, target shooting in the desert? Yep. Yes, they did that, too. When you, um, I don't want to know what Sharon said, but when you heard about some of these activities, did you express any concern to Sharon? Yes. What did you tell Sharon? that I wasn't comfortable with her doing these things and most likely it must have been because of how fast the relationship went. Um, he was, you know, adamant about the uh, life insurance and then I think the last straw might have been the earns thing. I'm like, the, this all just doesn't make any sense, like, you know. That, so you warned her? Yes. Do you remember whether or not um, Mr. Randolph was ever gone uh, during holidays? Yes. Do you remember which holidays those were? Uh, Christmas and Valentine's Day. Okay. And without telling me what she said, what was Sharon's emotional uh, state when he was gone? Uh, yes, yeah, she was very upset, crying, and just, yeah, very depressed and mad. Uh, just everything okay. uh, she you know were you aware that the absence was because of another relationship that mr. Renna yes um, during your um, friendship with Sharon and um, knowing mr. Randolph did you ever meet an individual by the name of Michael Miller yes where was it that you met him well I believe both times were probably at the house at Sharon's house okay in the house on Rancho Santa Fe yes Mm -hmm. And what was the what were the circumstances? Uh, as far like, like was it dinner or he just happened to be there? Uh, or? One time I went there uh, just to talk to her and he was there. 
I didn't, I don't think, I don't know if I knew he was there, but I just went over to the house. And then there was a time where we did have dinner. Yes, okay. we all had dinner. When, um, I know it's not a huge number of times, but in the two times that you met Mr. Miller, how would you describe his demeanor? He was uh, pretty quiet and he, uh, he was polite and cold, but, and quiet. Okay. Yeah. Did, um, in the time that, um, during the dinner one that you described, yes. the occasion when he was at dinner, was he talkative at dinner? Um, he, uh, sort of, he was talking to my son, uh, at the time about, um, you know, they were trying, cause, you know, to, to keep my son from, you know, doing the wrong thing, stay out of trouble type of thing. And then, uh, Michael just kept on talking, and, and Tommy uh, told him to stop talking. So Mr. Randolph directed Michael Miller to stop talking? Yeah, because he, he was like, you know, and that kind of thing. That's what he's like, no, no, no more. Okay, so he was sort of gesturing to him as well as like, you're done talking. Is that yes? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, once that occurred, did Mr. Miller stop talking? Yes. Was that the only occasion that you saw that because you only had the one dinner and then saw him the other time? Yes, pretty much. Um, do you remember if you um, spoke to um, Sharon um, on the day of her murder? Yes. Do you remember what time that was? Uh, between like five and six. In the evening? Yes. Okay. Um, was it in person or by phone? the phone and were you aware of plan she had that night yes when she was going to dinner with in a movie with Tommy with yes. Tom dinner in a movie yes. now on occasion with over your relationship with um, Sharon did you ever call her um, when she happened to be watching a movie at home or something like that yes and yes. what was her habit um, with regard to that yeah she always wanted to get off the phone <laughs> you know, and I would get kind of frustrated sometimes, like, I need to talk to you, <laughs> and who cares about this dumb movie? <laughs> so it was really important to her? Yes. And would she call you after the movie, like, concluded? Yes, sometimes, depending on if it was late or whatever. Okay. Um, you mentioned, I think, earlier in your testimony that there were two weddings for the Randolphs? Mm-hmm. Yes, I yes. Um, do you have any sense of when those were? That's just it. It's been so long. I, I, I can't remember. Um, I just know the, the first one was in Mexico, and then they were supposed to have gotten married again, but uh, to, to make it more uh, legitimate or something like that. And but we don't really kn I don't know when she did that, you know, none. I wasn't there. And so that, I don't know where they did it. OK, actually, that was my next question. You didn't attend either wedding. No, no. Okay. After um, after Sharon's murder, did you have any conversations with the defendant about what had happened? Yes. What were the how long after the the murder did uh, he talk to you? It was pretty fast. It uh, might have been that same day, I, um, maybe. Yeah, because um, he, yeah, he told me to um, not to you know don't t to tell Colleen not to come to the house. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it was that day. Something bad happened, and tell Colleen not to come to the house. So it was that day. Okay. Did was this conversation by phone? Yes. Um, did he indicate that um, he um, had shot somebody? Yes. Who who did he indicate he had shot? Michael. Okay. Um, do you remember him ever commenting to you that Colleen was crazy? Yes. Was that in that conversation or later on? Yes. No, it was that conversation, yes. Okay. What did he say about Colleen? But she sees um, two psychiatrists and don't believe anything she says because she's crazy. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. 
Oh, yes. I'm showing you um, what has been marked as state's proposed uh, 286, or sorry, 285, 286, and 287, and then one that's been admitted as 288. Okay. And I'm going to flip through these and just ask you if you recognize. I'll th flip through all of them. Okay. Um, do yeah. you recognize the individuals in those photos? Yes. State moves to admit 285 to 287. Any objection to 285 to All right, I'm going to put what's been admitted as 285 on the overhead. Um, you, who are those individuals in that photo? Sharon and Tommy. Okay. You weren't there, though, when that happened? No. And this is 286. Appears to be another photo from that day. Sharon and Tommy. Yep. This is 287. Yep. Sharon and Tommy. And what's been already previously admitted is 288. And Sharon and Colleen. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. You and I have never spoken, as far as you know, right? No. Okay. Um, I'm one of Tommy's lawyers. I just have a few questions to ask you about what you just talked about on direct examination, okay? Okay. Um, I can sense, and I certainly understand, that you loved Sharon very much, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. You were friends with her for several years? Just a few years. Okay, and you talked to her a lot? Mm-hmm, yes. And, I mean, probably goes without saying, but... Um, probably broke your heart when she died, right? Yes. Okay. And I want you to know I am terribly sorry for your loss, and I'm terribly sorry that Mike Miller killed your friend. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a few questions about some of the things you talked about. Um, you had spent some time with Sharon and Tommy together, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And... And you keep saying, mm-hmm, it seems silly because I know exactly what you mean, but Victoria over here is going to be typing everything down yeah. at some point. Mm, yes. So the best you can actually say yes rather yes. than uh-huh or uh-huh. Yes, okay. okay. And then the only other thing I'm going to tell you is you got to wait till I'm done before you talk, and I'll do my best to wait till you're done before I talk because she can't get us talking over each other. Okay? Okay. I know it's different than talking in real life. Um... When Sharon talked about him, she referred to him as Tommy, right? Yes. And you knew him as Tommy, correct? Yes. Um, everybody that talked about him referred to him as Tommy, right? Yes. Okay. So when you say Mr. Randolph or something like on direct examination, that's not how you referred to him back in 2008, right? No. Okay. Um, Sharon liked to go out to eat, yes? Yes. And she went out to eat with Tommy, right? Yes. She liked to go to the movies, right? Yes. And she did that with Tommy, right? Yes. She liked to go out and see live music, concerts, right? Yes. And she did that with Tommy, right? Yes. When they started dating, um, she actually asked you, do you believe in love at first sight, right? Yes. Okay. Um, indicating to you that she felt she had fallen in love with Tommy at first sight, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and they appeared to have a very good relationship at first, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. At first, there were times when Sharon was upset because Tommy had been seeing someone else, right? Yes. Um, you were aware that he had always made that known to Sharon, right? Yes. Like he didn't hide that fact, correct? No. Um, he talked to Sharon about it, and Sharon talked to you about it, right? Yes. Did you ever talk to Tommy about it? No. Okay. Um, you were invited into the Randolph home for dinner, right? Yes. And you ate with Sharon and Tommy, correct? Yes. And at least on one of those occasions, Mike Miller was there, correct? Yes. You mentioned your son on direct examination. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Yes. Okay. You had a son that was in his adolescent teenage years at the time, right? Yes. 
Um, and you had some concerns that he would be getting into some trouble, didn't you? Yes. And you actually asked Tommy and Mike to talk to him about that, right? Yes. And they did that for you, correct? Well, somehow the conversation came up. I don't know exactly. I just know that they were talking to him, and I didn't mind it. I didn't deliberately. I'm sure I didn't say, hey, can you just talk to him about this? Somehow it came up. Okay. And bring it back to my question. You had indicated a moment ago that you actually talked to Tommy and Mike about speaking to your son, right? I didn't talk to them to tell them to talk to him. Somehow the conversation came up, and when they were talking, I didn't mind. Okay. Tommy was involved in that conversation, yes? Yes. And that was a conversation involving you... Um, your son, about him staying out of trouble, right? Yes. And you were appreciative of that at the time, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you indicated that you talked to Sharon the day that she died. Do you remember that? Mm, yes. Okay. Um, when you talked to her, you actually became aware of her plans for that evening. The state asked you about that, right? Yes. You knew that her and Tommy were going to a dinner in a movie, right? Yes. And you knew that was going to happen sometime around 6 p.m., correct? Well, I don't know what time, but yes, they were going out. She talked to you about what they were going to do that night, right? Yes. And she actually talked to you about what had happened earlier that day, right? Uh, I guess what happened earlier that day. Yeah, like for instance, you knew that Tommy had been to the bank, right? Yes. And that he had withdrawn a large amount of money from one bank, right? Yes. And that he was going to put that in another bank, right? Objection hearsay. It has to do with the existing state of mind of the person she was talking to on the telephone about their plans for that day and where he was at the time. Objection hearsay and foundation. The ramp will never be over. Will she be testifying about Sharon's state of mind? You were talking to Sharon on the phone, right? Yes? Yes. She told you where they were going that night, correct? Yes. She also told you that Tommy was going to come pick her up and that he was out running errands with Mike, correct? Yes. And that he had in his possession a large amount of cash, right? Yes. That he intended to put in the bank, right? Yes. Okay. Sharon knew all that, right? Yes. He and was she... either withdrawing or putting it in. I, I don't, I just know they were going to the bank. Okay. You remember you talked to a detective by the name of Dino Kelly on the 13th of May of 2008. Do you remember yes. that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes? Yes. And you know that statement was recorded, correct? Yes. And you've had an opportunity to read that, right? Yes. And you would agree with me, having had an opportunity to read that, you know you told Dino Kelly back in May of 2008 that he was going to put a large amount of money in the bank, right? Yes. Because Sharon had told you that, correct? Yes. Okay. Um... And just to be clear, you knew that Tommy was with Michael that day before they were going to dinner, right? Yes. You said that Sharon told you in a phone call that she was out shopping for urns with Tommy, right? Yes. And you thought that was weird, right? Yes. You'd agree with me when Sharon told that to you, Sharon didn't think that was weird, correct? Nope. She thought that was just something that she was doing, right? Yep. And she did a lot of things in her life that maybe you wouldn't do, agreed? Yeah, I okay. suppose so. She, she's a different person than you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. So the fact that she may think something is appropriate to do, whether or not you think it's appropriate really doesn't matter, does it? No, but I'm her friend, so I'm allowed to tell her, you know, I don't think someone should be planning her death when right. she's supposed to be in love. Right. Because to you that's unconventional or different or weird, right? Yep. Yes. And she didn't think it was, did she? No. In fact, it was her idea, wasn't it? I don't know about that. Okay. Just to be clear, Sharon never told you, hey, Tommy's making me pick out an urn. I don't want to do this, right? No, she didn't say that. Okay. Sharon didn't have any problem telling you things that 
she thought were off or weird or something going on in her mind, how she felt, right? Say that again? Did Sharon have any problem telling you when something was going on in her mind? No. Did she tell you how she was feeling? Yes. Okay. You said you talked to Sharon on the phone daily, right? Yes. Sometimes several times a day, right? Yes. And you actually knew what kind of phone service she had at her residence, didn't you? Yes. It was a company called Vonage. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yes? And sometimes when you talk to Sharon on the phone, the call would just drop, right? Yes. And that happened several times, correct? Yes. That was a thing that you knew from talking to her, that the phone, the Vonage service at her house, would often go out, right? Yes. And when it went out for a period of time, you couldn't connect with her, right? Well, we would get on, I'd, she'd call me on her cell phone. Right. When the Vonage service went out, you sometimes would try to call her back, right? Yes. And you couldn't get her, right? Right. Because the Vonage service was out, correct? Yes. And so then to communicate, you would have to transfer to a cell phone, right? Yes. And that was a relatively normal thing in your relationship with Sharon, correct? Yes, but I would try not to call her on that. I would only call her on there if I'd call her phone and she didn't answer the cell phone and if I really wanted to talk to her. I'd so, call the home phone. So is it your testimony that the majority of your calls were on the cell phone? Yes. Because the Vonage service was that unreliable? Yes. Tony, how many times um, do you think you, in the, like in a month's period, how many times do you think you would have called Sharon on average on the Vonage line? Uh, like I said, if, if uh, I couldn't get a hold of her on her cell, or I guess if I knew she was home, sometimes I'd call the home. But most of the time I called the cell phone. Okay. And on those times, how many, I guess what, I, what I'm asking is over a month's period of time, how many times do you remember the Vonage dropping out or having a problem? Yeah, it would have problems, but I mean, it wasn't every single time we talked. So, yes, it, the, it did have problems sometimes. Okay. Sometimes meaning like once a week or once a month or what would you say? Um, I guess once, uh, I don't know, once or twice a month, I don't know, something okay. like that. And, and then you would just call on a different line or call back? Or... Yeah. So, Mr. Tomchak asked you about this um, shopping trip to buy urns. Yeah. Um, had Sharon ever done that with the like the mutual friend that you guys had that um, she was dating? Was there some effort no. to buy urns or make funeral plans? No, she didn't really talk about. Um, she was pretty healthy, other than her arm, you know. So she didn't really have a problem worrying about, you know, not being alive for too long, <laughs> you know. So no, yeah. it wasn't something we talked about until then. Okay. Mr. Tomchak asked you um, about this, uh, these errands that um, Mr. Randolph was running with Mike Miller on the day of uh, Sharon's death. Do you recall those questions? Yes. And um, based on what Sharon was telling you, your understanding is they were going to a bank and that sort of thing? Yes. Um, do, you re do you remember if she had concerns about that? No, I, I, I guess not. Do you remember what you told the police her comment was about him withdrawing this money? No, I don't. Would looking at your interview um, from that uh, year refresh your memory? Yes. This is page nine, counsel, of the voluntary. I could just get you to read this right here. And what was the question? I'll ask you a question one oh, second. Okay. Just let you know how you're doing. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Right. Having, having looked at your um, interview, which was on um, May the 13th of 2008, does that refresh your recollection as to whether or not she was concerned about this money being withdrawn? Yes. Yeah. That, I, now, yeah, she didn't know what he was doing with it. And she was concerned he was going to leave her again? Yes. You yes. told the police that back in 08? Yes, that is right. Yes. Um, there was discussion about all the activities that Mr. Uh, Randolph and Sharon engaged in. Do you have any sense of when those activities took place in their relationship? Like, was it at the beginning, the whole time, in the middle? How would you describe it? Uh, I suppose most of it was in the beginning because towards the end um, he was always in so much pain and he just laid around, slept most of the time. Did it seem to you like the relationship was um, happy and um, functioning no. properly at the end? If you could even bring up that one picture, they both looked pretty miserable if you, yeah. Then that was, um, I well, that was one of their wedding days. I don't know which one it was, but yeah, no, they neither they weren't happy. Okay, and in May of '08, um, was Sharon ha indicating she was really happy in the marriage and in, and everything was going great? No, she was happy that day, that night that they were going out, but no, she wasn't. She wasn't happy. Thank you. I'll pass the problem. I'll pass the witness. Here we go. <laughs> Did you pick which photos the state was going to show you? No. They did, right? Yes. Okay. You ever looked at a photo of yourself later and looked at your face and said, oh, that's not a very good photo of me? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I've done that. I'm going to show you what's in evidence is 286. This is the state's photo. You said they look kind of miserable in that photo, right? Yes. Um, you'd agree this is their wedding day, right? Yes. Uh, I, I assume Yeah. that that's what that was. You told us before that they were out and doing a lot of stuff at the initial parts of their relationship, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that included the time when they got married, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you'd agree with me in 285, that's, they're wearing the same outfits, right? Yes. They don't look too unhappy there, do they? Well, you can't see too much of their face, but no, right. I guess not. Because they're kissing each other, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, Appears to be something you do when you're having a good time, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you 287. They sure look like they're having fun in that picture, don't they? Yes. You agree with that, right? Yes. Okay. In fact, when you talked to law enforcement on the 13th of May of 2008, right after Sharon was killed, you told Detective Dino Kelly that their relationship was good, didn't you? No, I didn't. You didn't say that? No. I believe I said um, it wasn't, she wasn't happy. He was, he was leaving her all the time. Sharon told you she loved Tommy, didn't she? Uh, at some point in time, but maybe before all the drama he put her through. Okay. When you talk about all the drama that he put her through, 
You're talking about looking back at a relationship 15 years ago, aren't you? No. You're not? I don't know what you mean. Well, she died in 2008, right? Yes. Okay. You're talking about a relationship between 2005 and 2008, correct? Yes. Okay. You agree with me, 2008 is like 15 years ago, right? Okay, yes. Okay. You'd agree with me that you don't like Tommy Randolph, do you? No. Yes, I do agree with you. No, I don't like him. Right. And you and some of Sharon's other friends have been standing out in the hallway last Friday and today, right? Yes. Yes. Talking about how you don't like Tommy Randolph, right? And other things, but yes, I'm sure that came up. Right. And you want justice for your friend, right? Yes. And you want to see Tommy get in trouble, right? Get in trouble? Yeah. Uh, I just want to see justice for what he did. Right. You know. To not only Sharon, Michael, too. Yeah, you know as you sit here today, Mike Miller shot your friend in the head, right? That's the story. We're still not sure if what happened. None of us are there, so. Right, that's precisely my point. You weren't there, right? No. But you're here, yes? Yes. And you agree with me you don't like Tommy, right? Yes. Okay. Pass the message. And follow up with So you were you were just asked by Mr. Tomchek about um, I think you said all the all the drama in the relationship. What did you mean by that? Uh, like I said, him leaving. Uh, he left quite a few times, and he would bring his stuff in and then take all his stuff out. He had um, he would get you know people from like uh, Home Depot stuff like that to come move his things out. Um, and then, you know, he was, she would lose things, and then all of a sudden, mysteriously, he found it, and look, it was here the whole time, dummy, and, you know, just the way he talked to her and, um, you know, and treated her. Um, so let me... Let Christmas me. and Valentine's Day, you, you, you go to California to be with someone else, I mean... Did, did you feel he was disrespectful to Sharon? Yes. And did you feel that um, the relationship was not healthy for her emotionally? Yes, it was definitely not healthy for her. And as her friend, you were concerned about all kinds of things? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, does Jerry have any questions for this witness? Okay, you too. Thank you so much, too. Alice Wolf. I do. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay. If you could state this letter name for the record, please. My name is Alice Wolf. A L I C E W O L F E. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Wolf, were you friends with Sharon Randolph? Yes, I was. Um, how did you two meet? I met her at the hair shop. When she came there to work. And were you also working there? Yes, yes. And what hair shop was it? The hair shop. Uh huh. What was the name of it? The hair oh, shop. Oh, the hair shop. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not picking up on that. Um, and what, do you remember approximately what year this was? It was in the early 90s. 
1990s. Okay. Did there come a point when she didn't work there anymore? Yes. And maybe she worked somewhere else? Yes. Um, did you still maintain your friendship with Sharon? Yes, I did. Um, during sort of the period of January through May of 2008, how frequently were you talking to Sharon? What was the dates again? The, the last six months of her life, how, how often would you say you had talked? Oh, my goodness. Maybe two, three times a day. Okay, so quite a bit. A lot, yes. Usually by phone? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, did Person you, mm -hmm. as well. Did you guys uh, go out and do things together? Yes, socially? we did. What types of things did you do with Sharon? We'd go shopping. We'd go to the movies. We'd go to lunch. Okay. Did, um, because of the time frame you're giving us, uh, you knew her before she met Thomas Randolph? Yes. Um, at some point you're aware that she met him? Yes. Um, and did she, without telling me what she said, but she let you know she was involved in a new relationship? Yes, she told me. And... Were you two still working together at that time? Mm, no, I don't believe so. We, she was kind of like coming in and out okay. of the shop. So she could have been working elsewhere. You know, I really don't remember that. But okay. Do you remember discussing? Yes, she was. She was working somewhere else. Yes. Oh, okay. Do you remember her um, talking about uh, things that they did as a couple, that sort of thing? She only said that she had met him, Mr. Randolph, and that they had gone to a concert. Okay. Um, did you feel like the relationship was moving fast? Pretty, yes. Okay. Yes. And would that have been based on conversations that you had with her about the relationship? I suppose, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, do you remember ever meeting, or well, do you remember the first time you met Mr. Randolph? Yes, I do. Where was it? It was at the hair shop. It was on a Sunday. And do you remember the year or anything like that? It had to have been like 2000, maybe two, four or five. I don't know. 2004 or 5? Mm -hmm. And it was at the hair shop, you said? Yes. Okay. What were the circumstances? Why, why was he there? Well, she called me and said, uh, can you come to the shop? And I said, I never went there on Sunday, but she would, would go there now and again just to do a client that, you know. And I guess she was going to give him a permanent. Okay. And she had said that she had met this man, this guy, this guy, and that she wanted me to meet him. I said, oh, I can run by. So did you go to the hair shop? Yes, I did. And um, do you remember uh, interacting with him, or how would you describe what happened? Oh, God. He was, I was in the shop sitting at my station and waiting for her to come and they walked in and she sat him down and then she she had already told me a few things about him like you know who he was and all that and then she went in the back to prepare the the rods or whatever she was going to put use for his hair and so I got up and I stood behind him He's sitting in the chair, and I'm standing behind him, and I said, looking in the mirror, and I said, well, so Tommy, tell me, um, I, just to, to get to know him, right? Okay. I said, I understand you like the, the Cowboys. The football team. The football team. And he just kept looking down. He did not ever look at me. Did he answer? He just said, yeah. Okay. Did he... Didn't look at me, didn't look in the mirror, nothing. I asked him, uh, how was the concert? I believe that's what I asked him. I can't remember really, but he didn't actually answer. Okay. 
So he that I was remember. not engaging he was, with you. He was not engaging in any conversation with me. Okay. Um, the relationship, though, continues between uh, Sharon and Tommy. Yes. Um, did you ever express concerns to Sharon about your view of the relationship? Yes, I did. On how many occasions do you think you expressed concerns to Sharon? Probably every time I would talk to her. Okay, so a number of times. Yes. Um, and she kept seeing him? Yes. At some point in time, does uh, she ha does she ask you to go with her to make a will? Yes. Do you remember what year that was? I would. I cannot remember the year. Okay. Were you a witness on the will? Yes. May I approach her? Yes. This book I'm going to show you um, what's been admitted as page 309. And can I move this just a little bit? Sure. Okay. So here's the front page, and then there's some signatures here. Mm -hmm. um, do you recognize this document? Yes. Okay. Is this the will that you had uh, made with Sharon? It looks pretty much like it, yes. So I'm going to put this on the floor. So tell me where it was that you went to to get this will done. Well, I'm I met her in the parking lot of um, the hair shop. Okay. And then I got in her car, and she drove me. I, I believe it was on Rainbow. Uh, it was like a postal service. Okay. I believe, and they had a notary there. And that's what she needed. She needed to have a notarized uh, the will. Okay. And so this was like a, a pre-printed document that she got at like one of those post office businesses? Well, I don't think she picked it up there. I don't know if she already had it. Okay. But I remember that we were standing on a table, at a stand-up table type, and she was like writing this out. Okay. And um, did, is, is this her writing, like she would have filled it all out? I mean, you didn't fill it out for her. I this. did not fill it out. Okay. This is her. This is hers. Okay. Her. And so there's some property described and some bank accounts described and jewelry. Yes. And then uh, she leaves everything to my only child, Colleen Byer. Yes. Do you know Colleen Byer to be her daughter? Yes, I do. And looking at the last page of 309, um, it looks like it's 24th of January of 07, and it looks like there's a signature of Alice Wolf, mm -hmm. and then uh, Floyd Wolf. Right. Who is Floyd Wolf? My husband. Okay. So you two witness it, and then it's notarized. Is that right? Correct. Now, did you know what Sharon had written on, you know, in terms of the directives of this will? Did I know? Yeah, did she tell you, look, this is what I'm doing? Oh, she, she asked me, um, do you, does this look right to you? And I said, well, sure, yeah. Okay. What did she do with this um, after she filled it out and it was notarized? She folded it up, put it in an envelope, and handed it to me. And what did you do with it? Well, prior to that, I said, why are you giving it to me? And she said... Because if anything happens to me, I want you to give it to Colleen. Okay. So what did you do with it? I put it in my bank uh, deposit box at okay. the bank. All right. Now, at some point, um, Sharon um, dies, and, and what do you what do you do with that document? I went to the bank. I took it out, and I was working that. I had to work, uh, I think that was on a, I believe it was on a Friday. Um, I don't know if I did it or if my husband, I cannot recall, but I'm, I think it was my husband that went and got the letter. Okay. 
Okay. The, the envelope. I but I can't really remember. Okay. Did you ever get a phone call from Colleen indicating that she had received the document? I don't remember that. Okay. But I didn't hand it to her. My husband took it and left it at the house. Okay. For her. And you probably don't, I mean, because it wasn't you, you probably don't remember when that was done in relation to It was her like death. immediately. Oh, shortly after her death? Mm hmm Is that yes? Yes, okay. yes. Um, just prior to her death, did you know whether or not she was out of state, like in Utah? Yes. Where were you in um, Las Vegas at that time? No, I was in San Diego. Okay. And do you um, just happen to have a residence in San Diego? Yes, I do. And actually, while we're on that, on occasion, did you let um, Sharon stay in that residence as like a little vacation? Yes, I did. After um, Sharon was killed, do you remember if you ever spoke to Mr. Randolph? Yes, I did. How soon after her death? I believe she was murdered on a... Thursday night, Friday morning, no, wait a minute, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think it was a, a Wednesday, and then I, I was returning back from San Diego, so it had to have been like a Thursday. I get a phone call Thursday afternoon, and it was Tommy. And what did he tell you? He said, uh... Something happened to Sharon. I believe that's what he said. I said, I said, what happened to Sharon? Where is she? And I said, Tommy, what did you do to her? And he said, I didn't do anything to her. He did it. I said, who did it? He said, Mike. But he was very, very calm when he told me this he was did you know who Mike was I I yes I did you knew and what did, what was your understanding as to who he was he was a handyman that he had uh, found as a friend from some convenience store is what she told me okay um, you were aware that um, Sharon actually was married to mr. Randolph Yes. Did you attend either wedding? No. From talking to Sharon, I, I now want to focus on the time period of 2008. Was it your impression that um, during that time period the marriage was going well, poorly? How would you characterize it right at the end? Very bad. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Cross. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How are you? Could be better. Yeah, pro probably not a lot of fun to come here and talk about this no, stuff. No, it right? isn't. Um, it's not fun because you cared for Sharon very much. Right? I loved her, yes, very much. Um, I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, she seemed like a, a lot of fun. Would you agree with that? Sharon is a big-hearted, loving Fun person, yes. Okay. Um, and, and I didn't know her, but that seems to be what everybody says about her. Knowing her, you'd agree with that assessment of her, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, and you know that she married Tommy, right? Yes, I found out, yes. And she didn't actually tell you that at first, right? No. Okay. I mean, you would kind of let her know that you didn't approve of Tommy, right? I certainly did. Yes. Yeah, you didn't like him much, right? I didn't like him at all. But you know, she liked him a lot, right? At the beginning, yes. She fell in love with him, right? Well, I don't know if that would... I don't know. She would never tell me that, that she was in love. She, she never told you she was in love? No. Okay. Um, she never told you that it was love at first sight for her? She never mentioned that to me, no. Okay. Would it surprise you that she told other people that? Would it surprise me? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it would surprise me or not. Okay. I just had my own impression and I told her. 
Right. What I thought. So let's talk about your impression. You told us that the first time you met Tommy was in a Sunday at the beauty shop, right? Yes. And she had actually brought him in on the weekend to do something with his hair, right? Yes. Um, Tommy always had, in the entire time you knew him, real long hair, right? Yeah. And they went to rock concerts together, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes? And you knew they enjoyed that together, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. In fact, Sharon came back after one of these rock concerts, and she was just over the moon. She had fallen for Tommy. That's your words, right? I believe so. The first time, yes. Okay. This first time you met him, when you were in the shop on a Sunday, Sharon was there and Tommy was there, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes. She was going to do a particular thing to his hair, right? Correct. Um, And she was going to give him a perm, right? Correct. Okay. I've never had a perm, believe it or not. Um, But what I've seen is there's a process where you put rods in the hair and you kind of curl it up and you put it under this apparatus, right? Mm, Well, you put the solution on and just sit there. Okay. You don't put it under anything. Before the solution's put on, she actually washes his hair, right? I believe so. Okay. Sure. You knew that Tommy was hard of hearing, right? I didn't know that. Okay. I don't did believe you, so. Did you know that he wore hearing aids? I did not know. Okay. So Sharon didn't tell you he was hard of hearing and wore hearing aids, right? No. Did you ever wash anybody's hair in the beauty shop? Absolutely, yes. Ever wash anybody's hair that had hearing aids? Yes. They ever take him out first? Yes. It's pretty normal, right? Pretty much. For people that wear hearing aids and take him out to get their hair washed, um, might be hard for them to hear, right? If they, if they take him out? Yes. Well, I guess so, yeah. Right. It depends so, on your hearing, I, you know. Yeah, so let's say you're uh, hearing at a 2 out of 10, just to work with a hypothetical number. Your hearing aids come out, that's all you can hear. That would be difficult to communicate with someone, right? Hmm. Yes. I suppose, yeah. Did you ever have any of those people in all the times that you took out their hearing aids and washed their hair where you couldn't talk to them because they couldn't hear you? Never. Never? Not that I can say. Okay. Not when I'm right on them, on top of them. Okay. Would it strike you as unusual if someone was embarrassed about their hearing, if they just kind of sat there quietly rather than trying to engage in conversation when they couldn't hear something? I don't think they'd be embarrassed. Okay. You wouldn't be, right? No. Can you accept the fact that maybe other people... There's a possibility, yes. Sure. Um, After that moment, you didn't like Tommy much at all, did you? I worked in this hair business for a long time, and I have can pretty much read people when I first meet them, and I disliked him very much. Okay. Just I just got a creepy feeling about him. Right. Precisely my point. From the first time you laid eyes on him, when you tried to talk to him and he didn't respond to you, you didn't like him, did you? I just, just no. I just my I think my gut feeling was I did not care for the man at all. Okay. You felt that in your gut. Mhm. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um in fact, after Sharon died, law enforcement didn't actually contact I'm over here, ma'am. If you could just look this way. Sure. Thank you. If and just for the record, I mean you appear to be glaring at Tommy as you sit here today. You'd agree with that assessment, right? Yes. Because you pretty much hate him, don't you? I wouldn't say that, that I hate him. Okay, use your word. What is it that you have for him? I abhor him. Okay. Um, going out on a limb here, abhor kind of analogous to hate, right? That's a strong word, I suppose. Hate. Would you agree that abhor is a strong word, too? Not really. Okay. Um, after... Sharon is killed by Mike Miller, and you find out about that. I want to talk to you about a couple pieces of that history. Tommy actually calls you the very next day, right? Yes, to tell me that. And he talks to you in what you described as a calm voice, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes. And you understand the content of that call is Tommy is reaching out to Sharon's friend, i.e. you, 
to tell you she's been killed, right? I had to ask him what happened to her. Okay. Let me, let me walk you through it, okay? okay? He reaches out to you. He dials your number, right? Yes. And you have an understanding that it's to tell you something bad has happened to her, right? Yes. And he starts that conversation by saying, I'm sorry, Alice, but something has happened to Sharon, right? No, he didn't say, I'm sorry. Okay. He says, something has happened to Sharon. Exactly. Right? Okay. And you said, what happened? Put her on the phone. I want to talk to her, right? Yes. Okay. And he says, I can't do that. She's been killed, right? She's dead. Right. That's what he said, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And your response is, what did you do to her? Exactly. And he told you, I didn't do anything to her. He shot her, right? He, he did it, is what he said. Right. And you knew eventually in that conversation that the he was Mike, right? Yes. Okay. So you'd agree with me that Tommy called you to tell you what happened, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And you were pretty hostile with him, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you, ab yes. you abhorred him, right? Because I just did not like to care for the man at all. Okay. You're listening to Dark Vows, the trial of Thomas Randolph. There's more raw courtroom drama ahead as we bring you unfiltered audio from trial. Join us as we navigate the testimonies, the tension, and the truth behind the headlines. Press subscribe now so you don't miss a minute. More Dark Vows, the trial of Thomas Randolph, next.